keep things going here. We can't help anyone. It's as simple as that. You know, we, I live in a capital system, just like you. We're all going through our times, and if we want to maintain, you know, those things that we want to keep, then they need to be support, supported somewhere along the line. So I'll mention a link at the end of this video. So, do you remember me saying around about 12 months? Um, you know, I should really start to answer a question for some people who ask me, where's the best place to be with all these coming events? It's not a very easy question to answer. Uh, it can be genuinely answered. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that anywhere else on this earth isn't going to suffer the effects of climate change because what we've got going on is not just, you know, uh, cold temperatures during winter months that are getting more severe during those time periods. You know, it's not just that we've got a magnetic uh, pole reversal taking place, which is affecting jet streams via uh, uh, cosmic ray sedation. Uh, in, in the jet streams which makes them you know um, able to maintain more water and therefore make them jet streams more sluggish and that's why we're getting interactions over the northern and southern hemispheres with you know the polar and subtropical jet streams we're also getting interaction there over the equatorial regions between the two subtropical and I've pointed that out many times to you but is, is, is an answer, right? It's not the answer to your questions uh, with regards where it's best to be. It is just an answer. You know, I'm going to let you do the work. And what we're looking at here is a temperature map. And most of those regions that are in blue are around between minus 5 and minus, uh, sorry, and uh, plus 10 degrees. <laughs> sorry, I'll say that again are between plus five and minus you know obviously what you can see there minus 40 on the top bar but you can see the mean uh, one of the largest inhabitants on this planet uh, on this planet uh, come from russia kazakhstan uh, turkistan uh, tajikistan all those european countries um, ukraine belarus poland finland sweden uh, denmark belgium france portugal even morocco is half covered in sub-zero temperatures and we've got canada heavily being hit right now by some severe minus temperatures and also almost the entire United States you know okay Florida is holding on to a bit of temperature at the moment but just barely I want to show you an, uh, just a few other things we'll have a look at means we're on this uh, weather map uh, site we'll have a look at the precipitation as you can see there's not a lot of places that are experiencing you know 10 millimeters of water uh, humidity Again, you know, in Nigeria, Chad, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, uh, you know, those sort of countries are, you know, experiencing some um, uh, humidity in reasonable levels. Uh, pressure is likewise. Cloud cover, there's a lot of that. And remember, the reason why we've got a lot of cloud cover is because that is... Uh, water vapor up there which is causing the clouds you know this is uh, kindergarten stuff but you know I'm explaining to you that you know half the reason why we've got so much cloud cover right now is because the cosmic rays that are up in those jet streams and being transported uh, through the climatic system on our planet um, I don't think there's any point in looking at visibility because um, what we will have a quick look at is where the main um, densities are of wind are now I want to show you uh, another um, I'm getting to the point don't worry guys you know there's got to be a bit of information before I just give you the answer otherwise you're gonna ask me for the information afterwards so just bear with me I will deal with this pretty quick for you um, let me show you another map first of all now we've came over to North School and put the uh, temperature on the W3 maps so that we can see all the continents 
um, on the planet both over the northern and southern hemispheres I can also quickly show you the jet streams just in a few seconds but the point is here is look at the uh, concentration both over the northern and southern hemispheres right now of low temperatures or sub-zero temperatures and let's start to ask that question why would you live in countries that are experiencing you know um, persistent now climatic events which deliver uh, record-breaking sub-zero temperatures and, and you've only got to start thinking about you know okay how do we start to get around uh, putting crops in the ground to feed the billions of people over the northern hemisphere that live in these countries we're talking the whole of Europe Russia Canada and the United States UK Greenland and all the other countries that you can see that are covered in sub-zero temperatures why would you live there when in these countries equally they are chucking up the rates of energy to the levels that they are and following um, courses of action which are planned to reduce you know something in our atmosphere which is a trace gas down to zero by you know 2030 why would you live in a country like that maybe you know part of the answer to the question you ask me uh, some of these people is where's the best place to be is probably not in one of those countries because this is going to get continuously worse and some people might say to you are you picking on the northern hemisphere whilst it's at its um, maximum angle to the sun at this time of the year hence we're in the winter it's not the case you know the seasons are becoming prolonged the winters are becoming prolonged over the northern hemisphere and even in the summer you know you've only got to be slightly more observant than normal to notice the different types of cloud that are in the upper atmosphere even at tropical regions you will note um, the presence you should be noticing these things and you should be talking about them in your communities because you will see serious cloud formations these are clouds that are up in the atmosphere that have high concentrations of um, ice crystals and they're becoming more visible now than ever at lower latitudes some uh, there are some other anomalies which i talked about about five six years ago on this channel sun dogs these are like little rainbow balls left and right of the sun and sometimes you get one uh, when the conditions are really right and favorable just above the sun as well but these are common sight only in arctic regions not at you know latitudes of 50 and 40 degrees so we'll get straight to the point now and just point out one other thing that I mentioned a few years ago so now lastly we'll just look at uh, Google Earth and the reason why we're here is because it's very easy for me to just chuck the grid on so you can see uh, the longitude and latitude or lines and what we're talking about is what I said a year ago, two years ago, you know, in trying to answer this question, and I'll just reiterate it again. It's not the the answer, it's just one of the answers. Yeah. Maybe it's not a good idea to live above 40 degree longitude. For the reason that I've just showed you uh, with regards to temperatures, and you know, if the ship does it the fan and you end up trying to support yourself in uh, you know above those longitudinal lines you know above 40 degrees um, especially over the northern hemisphere uh, your cropping season uh, is going to be very uh, reduced so just a few months maybe a small season every year where below 40 degrees you know just like uh, we're looking at here it's the 40 degrees mark isn't marked out uh, for some reason like you know 70 degrees 50 degrees and 30 degrees but it's that next line that next band just below the Tropic of Cancer and it goes all the way around the world 
uh, maybe it's not a good idea to be living in a part of the world that is above that uh, longitude so anything above 40 degrees is going to be a bit of a struggle maybe below that you know you've got more of a chance because your seasons are increased and the reason why I talk about this is because you look at the um, ancient civilizations like Egypt and the Mayans you know they had to abandon their place where they lived because it became so unstable to live in those regions because the climate shifted and made it less favourable to feed the numbers of people that lived there and the numbers weren't nothing like what they are today and you know lessons should be really you know hard hardly studied because if you look at all these ancient civilizations one of the biggest failures for them and empires it will be gone it will go down in history for empires of all all even up to today's modern age it will be the same for them as well so one of the answers to that question where should we be would probably be below 40 degrees but I know it's not easy for everyone to do that because of other factors and that's why I said the, the, it's not an easy question to answer you know you could be of an age where you haven't got it in you to move you can't up and leave now to another part of the world you might not be accepted in another part of the world because of borders and boundaries um you know money could be a reason you might not have the money to do it you might not own nothing today and that means you know it's going to be a bit of a struggle for you to earn something tomorrow so you know you the idea of going tomorrow is a little bit harder as well unless you've got family that you can that can support you in other countries below 40 degrees your family might be another reason you might not want to leave your family or you might not want to leave because of your job you know etc etc the, there is lots of these factors but you might not want to stay above 40 degrees because the climate uh, will inevitably reduce that growing season down to just one season a year which means you've got a lot of work cut out for yourself and your loved ones another reason might be because of the modern attitudes in you know these countries above those latitudes sorry longitudes above 40 degrees i mean just look what's going on now with carbon net zero they want it achieved by 2030 the whole of europe and the united nations are going hell for leather to, to do it they've gone as far as putting the cost of electric up because they know people won't be able to afford to use as much as what there was six months ago so the renewables look all that much better because the demand has gone down and you know uh, there hasn't been a lot of increase in the last six months in bringing online new renewables so you know these are some of the reasons why you might uh, want to move or you can't move but staying there for any other reason than not to thrive and survive might be something to think about because this world is gearing up against all those modern European and Western countries and it is getting a little bit more difficult for people that live even below 40 degrees but it, I think it's more manageable to be in regions like that get below those uh, you know get below the Tropic of Cancer um, you know stay above the Tropic of Capricorn to a certain level and that's that's you know what I would do if it was possible for me even you know I've got I've got um, limitations of what I can achieve here I do have an option But then there are other things on that list of age, money, family, jobs, etc. that make it 
not the best decision to do. But you know, I still have to think, just like you guys, long and hard about this. And I think we do have a little bit of time at the moment. Things haven't got too catastrophic or catastrophic uh, proportions yet. But that doesn't mean that they can't in a very short space of time. And that they can't in, you know, a relatively long period of time, let's say 20, 30 years. And the reason why I say that is because, you know what, even though a lot of you guys understand what's going on, it hasn't deterred anyone having children to certain levels. And children, as you know, are long-term um, responsibilities. You don't just have a child around till they're 25 these days. You have them around, <laughs> unfortunately for some of us, hanging around, you know, into their 30s and 30, nearly 40s. So, you know, there are a lot of contributing factors to answering that question. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle to answer it. There is no short-term answer because other things pay, pay part of that but it all depends on your determination you want to avoid big events you want to avoid if you have got children them growing up in parts of this world which are going offline and they are going offline we've presented enough evidence to show people that that is the case because simply the seasons are changing on our world and that is just you know based on you know a magnetic pole reversal affecting jet streams and you know creating issues like polar and subtropical jet stream um, inter interaction and now we're seeing subtropical and subtropical over the equatorial region but it doesn't affect the planet at the moment uh, with sub-zero temperatures because you know, that is one of the most stable parts on our planet when it comes down to uh, winter and summer seasons. Um, with relationship to, you know, how close we are at a specific point and time in the orbit around the sun, which gives us over here in the Northern Hemisphere a winter and a summer as a result of, you know, at one half or 180 degrees at the cycle, we are at closest to the northern hemisphere and at 180 degrees on the other angle of the cycle uh, we're further away so i hope i've answered you know um and give you something to think about there but it isn't easy even way in here i mean but you know you you have to have the, i believe it's better to put cards on the table than you know, not to talk about them and not to put them on the table. You know, uh, um, maybe if we do a bit of brainstorming on this in the comments section. We might have other reasons why it's best to move or to stay. But I will leave you with one just last image because it's like a government bond. It's going to mature in the future and it's just a matter of when and that will present further problems for us that we will have to manage and this is that long-term government bond which I'm telling you you have to think about in the future and the reason why I've included a scale that goes back 450,000 years is because I want to show you something very clear and that is we are talking about cycles in the 450,000 years you can see that this has occurred five times and you can see where we are on the right hand side where it says zero and you know what's coming next don't you because if you look at how long we've spent in interglacial period you know we don't spend that long before we plunge back into another glacial period and that will certainly shut down the northern and southern hemispheres on our planet Guys, I hope you've given you something to think about in this video. There's a link down there if you want to support us here at the observatory. Would be 
you know a change to see more than just a couple of people every time we knock a video out there for you you know and I hope that the information we provide you know gets you thinking gets you planning you know brings the reality of where we are and what's happening as it occurs so link down there if you want to help and you know if you want to become one of our patrons why not subscribe links there as well also what I usually do you take care of your loved ones give what I've shown you in this video a little bit of thought and I'll say what I usually do bye for now